Okay, uh, great. So um, uh, a warm welcome uh, to this session uh, on the mentally healthy issues uh, framework. Um, I, I hope you're all well uh, and that you're as excited uh, as I am uh, to be talking about um, the framework. So um, my name is um, Amanda Lillifeld uh, and I am a program manager uh, on the sector improvement team at uh, Student Minds, the UK's uh, student mental health charity. Uh, so I lead uh, on our student, uh, student Minds SU's programme um, and support the work that we do uh, with the University Mental Health Charter. Um, and today, uh, as, as you are all aware, we will talk about the mental health issues framework, uh, a bit about um, what it is, uh, why do you need it, uh, and how, how most of all, uh, most importantly, we will uh, talk about how, how we can use it uh, to uh, create a positive change uh, in our organizations. Um, so, yes. Um, so um, why do we need it then? So why, why student mental health? Uh, well, why do we need to put resources uh, into working in this area? So even before the pandemic, uh, the number of students declaring a pre-existing uh, mental illness to their university uh, has more than doubled since 2014 and 2015. Uh, we know that the complexity of mental health issues is also on the rise and that increasing numbers uh, of students uh, are experiencing uh, suicidal ideation, uh, self-harm uh, and episodes of psychosis uh, and mental illness is not uh, just an issue in of itself uh, it has an impact on student experience so students experiencing mental illness they're more likely to withdraw from university uh, to underperform and they're less likely to uh, secure a higher level of employment uh, or go on to do a postgraduate study and too many students uh, are uh, unfortunately uh, taking their own lives um, and um, throughout the pandemic all students have engaged with their peers less uh, and, and they consistently uh, reported that they're experiencing high levels uh, of loneliness and that their mental health has worsened uh, overall and in January of this year 64% uh, of respondents felt that the COVID-19 pandemic had a negative impact on their mental health uh, and well-being 50% reported a negative impact on their physical health, and 61% reported a negative impact on their overall university experience. Um, we know uh, that staff mental health uh, in, in the sector has also been impacted. Uh, it's been researched less so on a national scale, uh, but we know that across the higher education sector, burnout, struggles with remote working, and keeping a life work balance, as well as job insecurities, all of these things have had uh, an impact on the mental health of all um, staff in the sector. Uh, and we know um, that staff and student mental health uh, are interrelated and interdependent. Um, so, so we need to not only take care of the students, but also um, our staff. Um, and in January uh, of uh, 2022, um, one in five students disagreed with the statement, my university is uh, taking steps uh, to improve student mental health. Um, so with all of this then, we know uh, that the pandemic uh, will um, itself will have a long-term impact on the mental health of our staff and our students uh, and, and students' and educational experiences. Um, we know as well that we've had a long period of um, firefighting mode, um, but the pandemic has also kind of highlighted that it's really, really important uh, to find time and space to think about those kind of long term goals and big issues that require cultural change, uh, like student mental health. Um, so uh, what is the framework then and how does it uh, support action on this? Uh, how does it support SUs to be able to uh, create positive change uh, in the area of uh, mental health and well-being. Um, the mental health issues framework, it sets out uh, principles of good practice that, they, that issues can work towards to create a mentally healthy issue. Uh, 
um, the framework um, itself uh, aims to uh, support SUs uh, to adopt a whole union approach uh, to mental health and well-being. Um, how does it do that? Well, it explains what a whole union approach is um, and what good practice looks like in achieving that whole union approach. Uh, and we have set out uh, 10 principles of good practice that, you, that the union can follow. Um, and as you can use this framework to undertake informal self-assessment and identify areas of improvement, uh, they can create a strategic plan or an action plan to create those kind of first small steps uh, towards improvement and, and towards working uh, on those uh, principles. Uh, so then that's just uh, a little bit of background on how, uh, why, uh, how we created this, <laughs> this framework. Um, so it comes from uh, in 2018, 2019, we undertook uh, a range of interviews with uh, SU senior managers and officers. Um, and this led uh, to the development uh, of our Student Minds SU's program, uh, which was launched uh, in 2019. Um, and a lot of uh, the kind of data uh, that we collected uh, through those interviews have informed the framework. Uh, but then uh, in launching the program, we continue to listen to our members uh, in events and workshops uh, on what they thought an issue's role uh, is in this area and what good practice looks like. It's also been guided by uh, the kind of wealth and breadth of research uh, by student minds uh, and, and partners our learning and insights. And this includes uh, the University Mental Health Charter um, uh, that, that was uh, a quite wide range of research was conducted in 2019 to inform um, from that framework. And that framework sets out a whole university approach with, within which um, SUs are also uh, part of, or the whole union approach is kind of part of as well. Um, the, the, and then also the co-production uh, toolkit, uh, which is which kind of sets out how students can be part of developing uh, mental health strategies. Uh, so that's quite a good, um, uh, resource for looking at uh, co-production uh, in the mental health uh, space. Um, it's been reviewed uh, by Steve Cool from Cool Insight. Um, he was uh, formerly uh, the director of NUS Wales, uh, but has uh, supported the development of other frameworks uh, like quality issues. Um, and it was also reviewed by Garrett Hughes, a uh, psychotherapist and also the co-author of the, men, uh, of the University Mental Health Charter. Um, we also piloted uh, the framework uh, with Westminster SU and, and Portsmouth SU through uh, our appraisal process. We'll have, go into a little bit more detail on later on, uh, but it's to see their kind of their strengths and weaknesses in regards to the principles, but also how um, the framework could be adapted to uh, support the, um, the framework further. Uh, um, so the structure of the framework then, it sets out uh, 10 good practice principles uh, for achieving that whole new approach. Uh, it then goes on to set out uh, key ways how this you can model the principles uh, through your everyday activities and actions, um, and also what roles uh, the SUs play uh, and which roles uh, are relevant to uh, each principle as well. So um, what is a whole union approach then. So the evidence shows that uh, our environment is a key, determin key determinant of, men uh, of our mental health. So our physical, uh, our cultural, um, social and personal environment, they, they all have an impact on our mental health and our well-being. Uh, it also says that different interventions work for different people. So uh, you might have an intervention that works really well for some people to support their well-being uh, and mental health, but might not work as well um, for, for others. Uh, <clears throat> so whatever we need for staff and students or anyone in society really to support their mental health and well-being is um, a multi-stranded approach. So um, a multi-stranded approach should include uh, a safe uh, and effective mental health service, 
uh, a range of proactive interventions that support mental health and prevent mental illness, uh, a mentally healthy environment uh, that supports mental health and prevent mental Ill illness, but also that provides that environment where we can work and study and, and thrive uh, together and, and, be, and be healthy. Um, so why, why does this uh, matter to, to SUs then? So as there are lots of ways that SU activity can impact on mental health uh, and well-being uh, of their staff and students, um, a, a whole unit approach is, is about having that intentional and positive impact across the whole of the SU's activities uh, in a joined up uh, and strategic way. And, and that's what the framework kind of sets out uh, how, to, how to achieve and create uh, areas to look at. So um, what, what, is, uh, what is the issue's role then in mental health and well-being? So um, as I alluded before, the framework sets out um, different roles that issues can play in this area. So it's uh, focusing on, on kind of seven key areas. And we know that issues are complex and multifaceted organizations um, and um, will will act in multiple different ways, uh, and there's multiple different ways that they can have uh, um, positive, create positive uh, change for staff and students uh, and their mental health and well-being. So first of all, as a as a service provider, not all but some SUs uh, have advice uh, advice services or centers um, where they are approached by students for advice. Um, and when they will be signposting and linking uh, them up with, with other services and for, for further support, um, uh, especially if they don't have a, a designated uh, mental health service uh, themselves. Um, also supporting welfare and wellbeing networks for students, um, campaigning for change and improvement within the student experience in the academic and mental health uh, and beyond. And also through community building on campus, um, you know, through your sports, societies, uh, networks, volunteering opportunities, uh, community projects and events, all of that good stuff uh, that you do. Uh, and all of that creates community and it prevents loneliness and isolation, which, as I was alluding to before, um, is a risk factor to mental health uh, and well-being. So uh, SUs play a really key role here for students uh, in their university experience. Um, but also as a volunteer, a volunteer manager and developing student leaders. Um, so this is kind of uh, two different roles. So one on the student, on the kind of student leaders and them being able to, um, so, so this is anyone who's like a president or sabbatical officer or secretary, so anyone who's a volunteer. Um, so first as a student leader, kind of creating spaces for students that are, um, safe and inclusive, and role modeling um, say, uh, healthy behaviors uh, and, and boundary setting. Um, but student leaders, they will uh, be approached um, by students, uh, and some might come to them uh, when they're experiencing mental health difficulties. So, um, how the SU kind of supports them and trains them. Um, is, is, is really important uh, and how they can maintain those kind of uh, healthy boundaries to ensure that their mental health is not impacted negatively uh, by this. Um, and then as an employer, of course, so uh, you, as an employer, you have a, a great impact on your staff uh, and sabbatical officers and their, and their mental health. Um, I think from uh, helping them being open uh, about talking about mental health with the line managers um, and how uh, how you created that mentally healthy working place, uh, but also how, how the SU supports staff to hold conversations um, with students who, who are disclosing uh, having mental health difficulties uh, and how you support uh, staff to understand their role and how they can signpost uh, effectively. But as you also have uh, that kind of uh, critical friendship uh, and partnership with institutions, so, um, Kind of beyond that campaigning arm, those relationships that you form with the university and that kind of partnership working uh, can can have a, a real positive impact uh, on on the environment um, and mental health and well-being of both staff and students. Um, and so 
all of these roles that I've just man mentioned, uh, we know that SEOs are already having an impact in, in different ways. Um, and when we talk about that whole union approach to mental health, we mean taking that strategic, conscious, positive impact uh, on mental health through all of these roles. Um, and not that it's just happening kind of incidentally. Um, so, so having a purpose uh, behind uh, your actions. But also I really want to emphasize that this is not a one size uh, fits all approach. Um, the whole framework is not a one size fits all um, approach. So some of this role will be more relevant for some issues um, uh, than, than others. So uh, as I said before, not all issues have an advice center uh, or service uh, and we're not saying uh, that you need to have all of these roles, uh, but it's a good indication of all the roles uh, that an SU can play uh, in this in this area. Um, so uh, the framework itself sets out uh, there's ten uh, good practice principles. Uh, we won't be going in in into detail uh, about them here now, but we do have uh, an opportunity to discuss and reflect uh, on the framework a little. A little bit later um, but uh, essentially these um, principles if you if you demonstrate kind of good practice in all of those roles that we talked about that, that uh, SU uh, key role in uh, this is what you will achieve and, and what you should aim for and I want to also just say that these are very kind of high level very ambitious um, principles as well so they they are um, they kind of set to to um, to have have as you strive for that kind of continu continuous improvement um, as well. So um, now um, before we get to, to hear from uh, from Bucks as you um, we will um, uh, we'll just focus a little bit about how how we can use the framework then. So um, I'm just going to copy a link in the chat. Uh, just a second. There we go. Uh, right. So uh, the first task um, would be to download the framework, um, but, and you can find this on our website uh, under Get Involved and and the Nestus. But I've also linked to it uh, here in the in, in the chat. Um, uh, so obviously, uh, then the first thing that you would do after you have read it is to think through with other people at your SU, uh, why is mental health important uh, to your specific SU? Because um, sometimes we can get a bit enthusiastic and go away to put things into action uh, and, and in, in place kind of without first thinking through why it's important to us and why we're doing this in, in the first place. Of course, the framework does talk about uh, why uh, and, and how uh, SUs can have a positive impact, but uh, it's it's good for you to also just reflect on your on your own as well, uh, so, so you know what what your uh, ideas uh, are uh, and why it is important in your specific context. Um, then uh, it's important to uh, understand the needs and experiences uh, of your staff and students. So um, and this should be kind of the basis of, of all the activity that you do uh, with the framework. But you can use the framework as a, as a, as a framework for consultation uh, with staff and students or other stakeholders and, and ask them questions around their experiences. Do they think that SU is performing well against principles, uh, against the principles and, and what, what could they do better? Um, and the third step then would be to start looking at your current practice. Uh, so start uh, identifying what you're already doing and what fits with uh, each um, principle. Um, and then step four is uh, to kind of uh, starting identifying where that area of strength uh, and development, where, where they are. Um, and then uh, once you've done that, you can create a kind of strategic plan or action plan for positive change. Uh, identify those priority areas from, from the review of strengths and weaknesses and, and to take action on uh, and to start to create some real clear steps to proceed uh, to create change uh, in those areas. Um, and then implementation, uh, so ensuring 
as someone that would drive the activities forward and ensuring uh, that change happens uh, on the ground and mon monitoring uh, what is happening too. Uh, and then finally, you would uh, have, a, have a review to uh, uh, where you can just ask yourself, have you achieved the aims that you set out? Um, and you can use the framework for this as well. So looking at the principle, uh, the principles, have we made progress in this area? Uh, what are the challenges uh, and how can we build on this going forward? Um, and then just uh, a few things to remember. So um, some of these principles and roles may be more relevant uh, to some series than others. Um, as, uh, we just want to highlight again that there is uh, not the kind of one size fits all type of framework. Um, and, um, uh, and, and do really look and adapt it uh, in, to, to your current context and, and what is relevant or less relevant. So do involve others in those conversations as well. Um, and you can work with us, uh, uh, the Student Minds. Um, so you can join our Student Minds as use program and get access to tailored training and, and support like with our uh, uh, appraisal and improvement plan so that's where we will come in uh, to your SU uh, and talk to, with your staff and students and senior management team to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are and create recommendations for improvement uh, that you can create create into your own plan uh, we have a strategy development workshop uh, where we will start uh, the process of thinking where we want to be as an SU and what are the big kind of strategic goals we can set to take us there and how how we can use the framework to create a whole uh, union strategy. Um, then you, as a member, you would also get access to network, network events um, and that, that will draw on all of these areas uh, uh, in different ways um, and support you to develop in different aspects and areas in, in relation um, to the principles and uh, be able to have practice sharing with uh, other um, with other SUs who are working uh, towards the same thing. Um, we will uh, be opening recruitment uh, for uh, next year's program uh, sometime now uh, in the summer, uh, hopefully by mid mid July. Uh, we should have the information out, and the program itself will start uh, in October. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so that was all from me for now. So now I would like to uh, hand over to uh, Sarah Jackson from from Bucks SU, uh, who will um, who they've been a, a member of our program for the past two years now, and uh, uh, they will share just some experiences that they've had uh, with working um, towards the framework. Thanks Amanda. Uh, hello everyone. Um, I think I know some of you but it's nice to, to meet you. Um, yeah so we signed up to this program two years ago uh, as Amanda said so that was uh, just at the end of the very first lockdown. Um, I'm sure you all remember that well. Um, we we knew straight away that there was going to be a significant impact. Mental health has always been a big priority for us, for, for our students and our staff. Um, but with everything that was going on and just knowing how we were feeling, the ones that were back in the office, we knew that we were going to have to do something significantly better um, for the coming years. So it seemed like a really apt time um, to start partnering with Student Minds on this. And we were really enthusiastic about the program that they had um, proposed and, and got stuck in straight away. Um, we had a lot of staff still on furlough, um, which obviously brought a, a lot of challenges itself. Um, and quite a few uh, students still on campus who were unable to get home for, for various reasons. So um, using, using what we could and those resources, um, our stakeholders, and the existing knowledge that we have, our first step was to do a real um, self check on ourselves, have a look at the principles and put everything in a box and say what we thought we 
did well, what we didn't do, um, what we should be doing. Um, I and mean also whether it applied to us, like Amanda said, this isn't a one size fits all thing and some things just won't suit some unions. Um, and I think it's important for anyone that does sign up to this to not be too hard on yourself and be thinking that you should be ticking every single box on, on those principles because it just won't be appropriate for you to do that. Um, depending on the size, demographic, need, demand on your, on your SEA. So how, how, how that has helped us by doing that self-check, um, like I said, we just identified where we were. It was just a, a real um, honest look at ourselves and having to accept where we weren't good and where we could do better. Um, and from that, we made a commitment to the mental health framework, which um, is a fancy document here that you can see on our website for anyone who wants to have a look. And the commitment is um, it details each of the principles and it's how um, and, and the modelling of that principle as outlined by the Student Minds Framework. But then we've also put a list of actions in. So the things we're going to do to make sure um, that we demonstrate our commitment to this um, for the benefit of our members and our staff. The um, commitment went to our trustee board who were fully on board with it, um, endorsed everything we wanted to do, had a concern that maybe it was um, a, some extra work for the people that would be delivering on this. Um, but we were quite quick to um, inform them and, and make put them at ease that actually this is something, this is a long-term thing. This, these actions aren't something we're going to achieve in six months time. These are things that we want to embed in the long-term progress of our organisation so that they become union-wide operational, a bit like Equality and Diversity did at the beginning of the 90s, for any of you who, who were around then. Um, but the, it, it becomes something that is just talked about and just considered as part of the day-to-day -day stuff that we do. Um, so from, once we've made the commitment and once they'd approved that and we were happy with that, um, we had their buy-in, which was really helpful. If you can get the buy-in from the people at the top, um, what that has allowed us to do is when it comes to big decisions like our new strategic plan, um, our mental health support um, and, and physical and uh, mental wellbeing ha has made it to the top, top list of priorities. So it's one of our key objectives for the next three years. Obviously, lots and lots of actions um, underneath that but we because we got that buy-in early on from trustees we were able to integrate it into our strategic plan what that means is the way because of our process around performance management and how we work that is now going to have individual tasks and departmental tasks in the operational plans so we've cascaded it up and it's coming back down to us now um, to an operational level um, it's informed what we do by, I mean, I, I have my action plan on my desk all the time. It's 28 pages. Don't be daunted by that. Um, a lot of it is now green, two years in, but there is still stuff that is yellow or red because, like I say, they're longer term things that, that need more thought or they need, they're reliant on input of um, others. Um, one of our big things was to campaign or lobby the university to take part in the university mental health charter. So Tash, who's been our vice president of education for the last two years, has worked tirelessly at that. Um, and then they got the letter from Michelle Donnellan that said every university needs to sign up, which was very, very helpful. Um, and obviously they're, now they're doing it, but I do think that Tash is sort of nipping at their ankles for, for the last two years, actually did bring that a little bit um, to the forefront of, of what they want to do and now they've acknowledged that it is important. We've implemented a quality impact assessments across all of our activity, which has really helped us um, identify what we're doing that, and, and how that impacts on individuals that are perhaps suffering with poor mental health or even in crisis. And off the back of those assessments, we've um, 
identified additional training opportunities which we've been able to source and we've had to review um, or indeed write whole new policies to come up with um, initiatives to, to tackle the challenges with those. Um, we feel through all that training and policy awareness and uh, just making everything a little bit clearer, I think our staff are more confident and better prepared to deal with um, issues with mental health. Um, our students are definitely more open to come into us, um, which actually has resulted in us needing a fourth officer this year to, to specifically deal with welfare issues. And a lot of people might say, well, oh, because you're talking about it more, you created more work. Well, they're coming to us um, and that's all, we're, that's all we're bothered about. We wanna know that these students are supported and actually we don't mind if they go to us or the institution but because we're talking about this on a regular basis, our wellbeing events are happening like almost fortnightly now. Um, and students know about what we can do and how we can support them with different issues. Um, so it's been a real, it's really raised our profile in that area. Um, and we still have the same procedures, you know, we'll, we'll work with the university teams, the counselling teams, the support teams there to um, deal with individual student issues. But like I say, I don't, we don't care who they go to as long as they go to someone and have someone to talk to. So I think we have seen um, more talk about mental health, whether it's positive or, or concerns. Um, our training is definitely better. We've got clearer policies. Our staff and officers are more confident. Um, it's been a really, really productive two years for us and I think like I say although we've got actions outstanding um, we're we're really looking forward to what we can do with this going forward because it is becoming part of what we do on a daily basis that whole whole union approach uh, to positive mental health has definitely happened here um, and whilst we're not there yet we're, we're, we're definitely on the right path now does anyone have any questions for me? Tumbleweed moment there. Hi, Sarah, that, that sounds great. Thank you so much for presenting. Can I ask a little bit about the, the co-production model that was mentioned? Um, was there training or like, how did you get to the point where there's a shared understanding about that? Because I think that unless it's very clear, different people have different interpretations in terms of what's best practice and how do you get a whole or, you know, union approach to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, with regards to the co-production, we, we used our activities team a lot. So we wanted to hear from students, uh, typically our students lead, student leaders. So the guys that are leading our clubs and societies. Um, and as a starting point, we've implemented mandatory training for committees on mental health awareness. Um, and what that has provided us with is the opportunity for focus groups via those platforms where we can get input from students that are having to deal with um, maybe disclosure or um, identifying issues or reporting issues in some way. Um, the, when it comes to cross departments within the union, there was some challenge. Um, everyone wants to look like they're really interested in mental health, but if they have to do extra work, their interests might not be um, so positive. Um, so what we what we wanted to do was just not make anything additional. So this is not something extra that you have to do. This is part of your responsibility to provide an inclusive and supportive service to our members um, and this is just another thing that we're adding in it's not um it's not it's no extra work for anyone and i think that that line get, getting that buy-in was just making it clear all the time you're not going to have to do anything extra but when you're thinking about that event where's your safe space how are students going to be signposted who's trained to deal with different instances um, so it's stuff that we're doing already we just need to think about it in the same box now that answer your question sorry 
no that's great thank you I, I get that yeah so not additional work stuff they're already doing yeah, yeah. it's important yeah uh jenny yeah, um, thanks a million, Sarah, for sharing your experience. Um, probably rolled on from Siobhan's question. We're working in the same union in Limerick in Ireland. Um, uh, I was wondering, like, did you need, what were the resources that you needed at the start? Like, I know you spoke about implementing everything into your core work, which I think is is very important, you know, that we all make that collective decision to implement this in our every day to day kind of operations. Um, but when you were looking at like your developing your strategic plan to even go about developing your strategic plan about mental health, like did you need extra resources? Like did you have a staff member or a team that had that were tasked with doing this? Like at, at the initial stages, I was wondering. Yeah, so for, for the first sort of three months, we had a working group, and that was someone from every department. Um, and again, making it clear at the beginning, I just want you to come to this meeting for an hour once a month for your views. You're not, it's not your job to do all this. Um, and the working group, really, we went through, we had our template action plan, which was all the principles and the models of the principles. And then we, and at each of those working groups, we just went through a couple of principles and said, all right, what's your department doing on this? What's your department doing on this? Any ideas what you can do better? where are the gaps? Um, Tash has just joined, I, I see. Um, and so the working group was really key to that. When we'd filled in something on each um, principle, actually that was too many people in the room. <laughs> so um, so we, we thanked them very much and sent them back, back to their, their duties. And then myself, Tash and, and two others um, from the wellbeing and the, the comms team worked through those actions and some people were really enthusiastic about some bits so where they were um where they showed uh, a real enthusiasm or were really keen to be involved we were like well do you want to take that one on and if they had the capacity and they were enthusiastic then that worked out well Anyone thanks sarah else? Tash, I, I know um, you didn't hear what I just said, but I just talked through sort of what, um, how the framework has informed what we do, what, how we've integrated it into the strategic plan, what impact I think it's had. Is there anything you want to add? Um, I'm sure you've probably, probably covered everything that we have, but I think, I'm sure Sarah's probably already said, but it has had a real impact on both our strategic and sort of what we do operationally day to day it is a part of everything in what we consider now and that was sort of my goal so I'm a sabbatical officer for for Buck Students Union currently and that was sort of where this all started we wanted to make sure the end goal was the strategy but we did want to make sure that all our staff team knew that in their day-to-day -day operations that this is a priority alongside everything else that we do and we do feel that we've achieved that over the past two years so it's and the support we've had during this program from the team and and the action plan and everything that you get as part of that progress has really helped to sort of consolidate but also to keep us on track as a union as well because i'm sure for all of yourselves as well time time is is of the essence and it it can be a real challenge um to fit things in so the the team at student minds have been very good at holding us accountable to sort of what we've wanted to do over the past two years and also sort of help us to look at things from a different perspective if we are if we think that we haven't done a lot but actually when we do discuss things through with the team they make us realize that we're doing a lot more in our day-to-day -day operations than we actually realize and I think it's fair to say that we have sort of changed the mindset and actually one of the things for example that we've instilled is is wellness action plans for all of our staff and actually some of our staff have come forward for the first time to speak openly about their mental health and well-being and I think that in itself just for our staff is a massive massive thing so um, there's so many benefits that we've had from completing this program but for me that's that's one of the key takes and that's just in relation to our staff let alone all the support we've given we've been able to give to students through this as well. Uh, Gemma? Did you have a question? Hiya. Um, yeah, I was curious, I guess in in the kind of context of mental health, I find that people are more ready to talk about the reactive stuff 
of, okay, I'm experiencing a challenge. Now I need help or how do I fix it? Now I've got it. And in the, you know, in the student minds framework, there was talk about proactive interventions. And it sounds like a lot of the strategy that you're, you're doing will be that mixture of proactive and services. And I'm wondering what the reception was and if you've any comments about the popularity of, of both or the buy-in for those different angles. Does that make, sorry, I don't know if that makes yeah, no, sense. No, no, that does, yeah, no, that absolutely makes sense. And I think um, from the proactive stuff, so the wellness action plans, I can't forget, I can't believe I forgot those as HR manager. It's like my biggest thing of the year. Um, the wellness action plans had a real mixed reaction to start with, I think think because everyone's like oh why do they want to know that about me and that and they are very very proactive because it's not talking about things that um happen to you all the time it's talking about something that might happen at some point if there's certain triggers so um and certainly with my team they're completely confidential i don't even know what what has been discussed in those meetings um between individuals and their managers um unless they've asked me to get involved but um I found them really useful just to get a better understanding of, of my team, of what might happen if certain things happen, like I say, um, and how I can support them through the, those situations. Um, so from a, a general management perspective, that's been really useful because you get to know people a bit better. And I think the fact that we've had those conversations gives them a little bit more confidence in me that I might know how to deal with things if um, if they were to happen, I think the pro the other proactive stuff with the training, um, we're lucky to have such a committed team here, but they love a development opportunity. Um, so the the training has worked out really well. Um, we did, you know, and and with our student leaders as well. So, like I said, the committee members are all trained in mental health awareness. They all know safeguarding and signposting procedures so they know what to do if there's any incidents and having that confidence has really helped um sort of stem things before they get worse if you like so dealing with things at the beginning before they become a reactive situation having said that because of covid uh, uh reactive work has definitely shot up like we say we need we've got a new officer this year an extra officer to deal specifically with um education and welfare um and i think you know we're, we're not expecting that to calm down anytime soon so i think that is more the reactive stuff is more accepted by staff you've got more buy-in because you have to do it that's what we're here for the proactive stuff it, we're ticking the boxes for some of their individual needs so we're getting the buy-in that way by doing that i think Anyone else? Back to you, Amanda, I think. Uh, well, great. Well, well, thank you so much uh, for, for sharing with everyone uh, what you've been, been up to and the impact uh, uh, your work has had on the organisation. Always, always a treat for us to, to, to hear um, and really helpful for everyone here as well. Uh, um, to, to say a big thank you and thank you for, for answering uh, the questions as well. Um, so um, the next just kind of final thing that we wanted um, just to do with all of you was just to kind of um, reflect a little bit uh, about the framework. Um, and uh, I will pause uh, the recording here. So if you are watching this later, um, do have a have a think about these questions and um, email us at su support uh, at studentminds.org.uk if you have any comments or any queries uh, at all. 